Geography, Standard 9th, Chapter 9, Practical Points to Learn 9. Practical 9.1. Cartography 9.2. Maps 9.3. Field Study Learning Outcomes After learning this chapter, you can get the following information. What is cartography? Nature and scope of cartography Understanding the following skills Map reading Elements of map Prepare isoplet maps Collect information by using scale comprehension and make presentation Visit to a village Students may go to visit a village and they can study its population occupation, transportation, etc. by asking questions to the people of that village. An example of a model questionnaire is given below. How many members are there in your family? What is the name of the head of your family? How many family members are literate? How much land your family has under agriculture? What crops do you grow in Kharif? What crops do you grow in Ravi? What type of irrigation is used for agriculture? What type of fertilizers are used for agriculture? Which is the near market to sell your agricultural products? Where do literate people from your family work and what kind of work do they do? Besides agriculture, what other activities are carried out in your village? Which is the nearest town from your village? What kind of transport facilities do you have in the village? What is the frequency of vehicles in your village? Your village school is up to what standard? What is the source of your drinking water? Do you have electricity connection in your house? What cultural activities do you have in your village? What other facilities do you have in your village? According to you, what facilities are required immediately for your village? Nine point one Cartography. Cartography is the art, science and technology of making maps. Cartography has been in existence as early as 3rd century BC. At that time, maps were drawn on a clay tablet. A prominent geographer, Claudius Ptolemy, produced the first set of maps. But Greeks and the Arab geographers were the first to start producing maps using modern cartographic techniques. They used measurements of the Earth's circumference and latitudes and longitudes. In India, Europeans produced more accurate maps during the age of exploration for resources since 16th century. The first modern maps were produced by the Survey of India established in 1767 by the Britishers. Survey of India continues as the official mapping authority of India. Nine point two maps. A map is a visual representation of a part of the Earth's surface or the whole Earth on a flat surface drawn to a scale. Elements of maps. All maps have series of common elements known as essential components of the map. They are listed below. Title A map should have a title, name on top. Subtitle Just below the title or along its side, the subtitle is given. We understand the purpose of the map by its subtitle. Scale Scale is a ratio between a distance on the map and the corresponding distance on the ground. There are three types of scales. A. Verbal scale. It gives direct relation between a distance on the map 
with corresponding distance on the ground. For example, 1 cm is equal to 1 km, meaning 1 cm on the map represents 1 km on the ground. B. RF Representative Fraction It is a fraction or ratio where one unit of any measurement on the map represents corresponding distance with the same unit of measurement on the ground. For example, 1 is to 1 lakh can be 1 centimeter on the map represents 1 lakh centimeters that is 1 kilometer on the ground. C. Graphical or linear scale. This scale is drawn on a map represented by a line or in the form of a bar that is divided at specific intervals. Each division represents a specific distance on the ground. Map Reading A map has a lot of information loaded in it. We have to read this information carefully. First of all, we should study the map as a whole and its elements. Then, we must find out the theme of the map, that is, what patterns are found in a particular region. For example, correlation with drainage and transportation. Refer to the road map of Maharashtra. These patterns can be interpreted. Lot of suggestions and solutions can be processed while interpreting the map. Direction On the other hand, repeat, on the right hand corner of a map, the north direction is indicated with the help of an arrow which helps to locate other directions. Projection Our earth is spherical in shape. Hence, it is not possible to represent this three-dimensional shape on two-dimensional maps without some distortion. Therefore, this transformation introduces some changes in directions, distance, area and shapes from the way they appear on a spherical shaped earth. For that, a grid of latitudes and longitudes is geometrically drawn as a base on which land features are transformed. Different types of projections can be constructed according to the requirements of a map and area. Projection is a network of graticule or grid of parallels of latitude and meridians of longitudes transformed from the spherical surface to a flat surface. Conventional signs and symbols. A map has a lot of information represented by signs and symbols. Mostly, they are very informative to the object they represent, like temple, mosque or church. Sometimes, abbreviations are used. Colored signs and symbols add to a lot of information. These signs and symbols are not drawn to scale. Index an index at the bottom of a map can be referred for conventional signs and symbols. Methods of drawing an isoplet map Drawing of isoplets joining the places of same value may be called as interpolation. To draw an isoplet map, we need a base map with point locations of different places. According to the data, at these point locations, whose value members are interpolated, these points of whole values are then joined by smooth curves with the intervening places shaded as per the value. This is called an isoplet map. Refer to figure 9.1 and 9.2 where temperature values are interpolated. Maps can be classified as follows. On the basis of scale and on the basis of purpose. On the basis of scale. According to scale, maps can be classified as large-scale maps and small-scale maps. 
large scale maps. When small areas drawn at a relatively large scale, it is known as a large scale map. These maps are very informative and have precise surveys. They are further divided into two. A. Cadastral maps. These are village maps prepared by the government agencies. They are very useful for keeping records of land properties with accurate boundaries. These maps can be drawn at 1 is to 4000 or 1 is to 2000 scales. Cadastral maps are necessary for town or village planning. Topographical maps. These are fairly large scale maps. They are prepared at national levels. The country is divided into grids. Each grid has a number and it is further divided. This way, series of maps connecting each other are prepared. They carry all the information possible without overcrowding a map. Physical as well as very cultural features are shown with different colors, signs and symbols. These maps are also very useful for military purpose. They are drawn to 1 is to 2 lakh 50 thousand or 1 is to 50 thousand or 1 is to 25 thousand scales. Small scale maps. These are the maps that cover repeat these are the maps that cover up large areas. They are divided as wall map. Generally they are used for educational purposes or for display. Atlas maps. These are very small scale maps, but they are very useful to show locations, relief or overall general information of a country or a region. Use of maps. Maps are very informative if read correctly. They provide general information of an area. Government departments use maps for planning new projects. For education institutes, maps are an important teaching aid. Tourists use maps very carefully to plan their tours. Meteorological departments can forecast weather conditions by reading weather maps. Thematic maps are used by individuals according to their requirements like agriculture or forest maps. Topographical maps are very useful for defense personnel. Maps provide fairly accurate administrative boundaries. Nine point three field study. Geography is a science to be learned through observation. Field study gives us an opportunity to get first hand information. Information about physical or economic aspects of our surrounding should be recorded. Field visits also help us in understanding man-environment relationship. That is why such visits are very useful for the students. Before we go for any field study, we have to plan it in the classroom. The location of the field visit also has to be decided. For example, river, dam, factory, a settlement, etc. Depending on the place where we are going, we have to make preparations accordingly. Preparation for a field visit Before visiting an area, students should understand the aim or purpose of this visit. Accordingly, location and route map or sketch can be drawn. If you are visiting a factory or a dam, prior permission is necessary. They should carry a notebook, pen, pencil, scale, tape, compass, carry bag, camera, binocular, etc. to note down all the information. If some data has to be collected, then they have to prepare a questionnaire beforehand. Students may carry some bags to collect samples of soils or rocks.
Selection of field. Different locations can be selected for field visits depending upon the place where we live. For example, a river bank, canal or a dam is ideal if we want to understand physical features. It should be a nearby forest for city students. A village or a factory can also be good places. These places should be easily accessible so that the students can reach there easily. On the basis of purpose On the basis of purposes, maps can be divided into two. A general purpose map. These maps give general information of different types of data. For example, physical map, political map, and topographical maps. Thematic maps. These maps show spatial distribution of a single theme. For example, population map, agricultural map, rainfall map, etc. Different methods are used to draw thematic maps. Dot map. This is a very convenient method for representing absolute quantity or numbers on a map. Each dot represents a certain number of objects or given data and according to the data, a number of dots are plotted on an administrative map. These maps are used to show concentration of objects. For example, population map. Choropleth map. When quantitative information is represented by color tints or specific shading, in an administrative map, it is called a choropleth map. In this map, values are graded and each grade is given a different shade or a color tint. Accordingly, an administrative map is shaded according to its grade. Isopleth map. These are imaginary lines joining places having the same value. Generally, this method is used for natural or physical phenomenon like temperature, rainfall, etc. Isotherms equal temperature. Isobars equal pressure. Isoheights equal rainfall. Contours equal elevation above mean sea level. Contours. These are imaginary lines joining all the places of same height above sea level. These lines are drawn at equal vertical intervals. If these contour lines are spaced close to each other, they represent a steep slope, whereas widely spaced contour lines indicate gentle slope. Value of the contours is given along the lines. Importance of field study Students learn the relationships between physical and cultural factors and how man adapts himself accordingly. They also learn to compare the areas and their activities. They develop the skill of observation and reasoning. They get an opportunity to interact with people. Students develop the feeling of belonging to these regions. Report writing. The report should include whatever information they have collected along with their observations. While writing a report, students should draw sketches, maps, drawings, paste photographs and represent statistical data with graphs if possible. While writing a report, students should follow a certain pattern as given below. 1. Introduction. Name of the place visited should be given. Its location can be marked on a map. The distance from the school to the place can be calculated. How they have traveled and what they have observed on the route can be noted down. 2. Location Students should try to find out the relative location of the field. They should mention if it is located on a hill or a plateau. 
If it is a village, its administrative location can be mentioned. 3. Physiographic features Physiographic features like relief, plain, plateau, hill, etc. can be observed. Water features like rivers, canals, wells or lakes can be noted down. Students should try to find out the type of soil of the area they are visiting. 4. Climate Climate data like temperature, rainfall, etc. can be collected from administrative office or a rough idea from the people of that area can be obtained. This way, they can give a rough idea of the climate of that place. 5. Land use Students should find out the land use pattern. They have to check how much area is under agriculture, forests or mining, etc. 6. Population Information about people of that area, male, female, age, literate, illiterate and their occupation structure can be collected with the help of a questionnaire. They can find out the standard of living by observing the amenities in that area. While making a report about the population, some charts or graphs can be prepared. 7. Conclusion Depending on the above information, students can write observations about the interrelationship of natural and cultural environment, people's activities and how they are dependent on the resources available.